The end of 2022 is upon us, and you know what that means, my friends. It's time for my yearly beauty favorites. I love to film these roundup videos. I love going back and looking through all the things that we loved and played with throughout the year in terms of beauty products. And I love to go back and look at previous years too to see just how much my makeup and my favorites and my makeup style has changed. I think it's such a fun little, I don't know, memory, piece of history to have in the lineup. And so I'm very excited about this year's roundup because first of all, I have never sat and done my makeup with you. So I'm gonna be doing that today. I'm gonna to be doing my makeup as I put my favorites on. And I'm doing that because normally, like I have so many different favorites all across the board, but I feel like this year, the beauty favorites like really, really more than ever stay the same. And that's because this year was focused more on like honing in on the skills, honing in on the different tips and tricks that we learn from TikTok, from YouTube videos, from makeup artists. Like this year, I feel like I am ending the year so happy with the lineup of my makeup. Normally I start the new year with like my new year, new me, everyday makeup. I'm like, I don't even want to change my everyday makeup roundup right now because I'm so happy with it. And I'm so happy with how my makeup has been wearing and looking. And I think you guys will, will see that when you see my favorites, because I, I think it, it may be my smallest pile yet. Is it part of growing? Is it part of maturity? I don't know, but you guys, I have so many lovely products to talk about. And this is going to be my roundup of my beauty favorites from 2022. And please let me know in the comments down below all the products that you have loved how many products were similar to mine how many favorites do we share please let me know all the things that you loved in the comments down below i love going through your guys's favorites i love going through your recommendations and products i've never heard of so please do let me know and i really hope that you enjoy my favorites so let's put some makeup on this face i'm gonna actually start with primer and this year was kind of the year of no primers for me which is very bizarre i didn't really have consistent favorites and that's because this year i was really really happy with my skincare consistently my skin has been the happiest it's been and i think it's because I was trying less and less products and sticking to a really consistent skincare routine. So in general, my skin was much happier. And I think because of that, I didn't find myself reaching for primers as much as years past. So I don't actually have a primer favorite to show you, but we do have some very consistent base favorites. So I actually wanted to start it with the tinted sunscreens. Now this one is the La Roche-Posay tinted sunscreen. And like I said, this year I really focused on the skincare. I started using retinol this year. And so the focus on like sun protection more so than ever before has been very much at the at the forefront of my thoughts <laughs> so I think out of all the tinted sunscreens I've tried this is one of my favorites and because it gives such a like wet delicious look on the skin it's so good the only sad part is they just really lack in shade availability for sure but for my personal skin tone this one is amazing because a lot of the tinted sunscreens can actually be quite warm and quite orangey so consistently all year round like including now in the winter when I'm very pale this is the perfect shade and this has been so such a delicious discovery from this year. And if you wanna get into the tinted sunscreen game, get your hands on this. If the shade suits you, it's beautiful. You guys are absolutely gonna know what my top foundations were from this year. It is no secret that these two foundations ruled my world. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation and the Chanel Le Beige Complexion Touch Foundation. I don't wanna use anything else. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? I just love them. I love them and it suits all my needs. There's a few, obviously, I like to, I do love to dibble and play. But right now, at this moment in time, if I had to get rid of all my makeup, I would run sprint <laughs> to buy these. This one for that like lighter, literally it feels like water going on your skin. It's like water with a little bit of coverage. It makes your skin look wet and dewy and delicious. It's so expensive. I understand that it's a Chanel product, but I, I just have to say there's nothing more beautiful, nothing more skin-like and wet <laughs> that I have ever put on my skin. It truly changed me. I don't even know what else to say about it. You guys know how I feel about it. It's so good. If you haven't tried it, you simply must. I don't make the rules. Now you probably can't tell on the camera, but I do still have some curdling tan on my neck. So I'm actually gonna go in with a deeper shade. I'm gonna apply the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I have this one in the shade four, and this one was just such a, oh, it's so beautiful. And this one versus the Chanel one is, is less of that watery feeling, more of that like creamy, delicious foundation, truly skin-like, but it's got a little bit more coverage. So on days when I'm feeling a little bit extra red, if I have breakouts, I do like to reach for something with a little bit more coverage. And I love to apply this with a beauty blender that is my favorite way to do it and the biggest like takeaway the biggest comparison the reason why I love this foundation so much is it's like 
the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, the like cult classic favorite that so many of us have had for so many years, but like more catered to dry skin. It just has more of that dewy, wet, natural look. The Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk one is kind of like that perfect, natural, nothing look, but this one just has that little extra dose of hydration and, and dewiness. Like it really adds a natural glow to the skin. Like that's just the foundation. Oh, it's just, it was truly such a favorite. Every time I put it on, I'm like, wow, over and over again. It never ceases to amaze me. And those two foundations, the top, top from the year. Now, speaking of dewy, natural, succulent looking skin, I've got a lot of uh, concealer favorites from the year. I'd say obviously the most recent one has been the Dior Backstage Concealer. I've used this before, but really became like such a favorite over these last few weeks. This is kind of like an end of the year bonus because I loved it so much. I have the shade 2N in that. Um, earlier, I really, really discovered and played with the Armani Luminous Silk Concealers. I have these in two shades. And just really, again, that natural dewy kind of lighter to medium coverage concealer, just something that you put on and it melts into your skin. Such a beautiful discovery, rediscovery this year. But I did really wanna give an honorable mention to the NYX Bear With Me Concealer. Sorry, Concealer Serum. I have this in two shades as well. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind, of, I kind of forgot about this one and I was going back through my old videos and I was like, wow, I forgot how obsessed I was with this. And this was definitely a favorite from the year. I'm gonna use the shade Vanilla because that's kind of the, the closest concealer to my skin right now. And this is one of those concealers, like truly when it says concealer serum, it's a product that just melts into your skin. You hardly have to work to blend it in. This is definitely something that I reserve for my better skin days. If I'm having breakouts or whatnot, I wouldn't reach for this one, but it instantly went onto the top of my favorites for that natural dewy, juicy looking skin. And I can go around and like press this with my finger and it'll just melt as it goes. It's so beautiful. And with such a highlight, such a discovery from this year, I'll just go around with my beauty blender and also just blend that out. And you can see I hardly have to do anything. It just soaks in. It's such a gorgeous concealer. And even though it's like more affordable and price point from the drugstore, you wouldn't know with how delicious it looks on the face. <laughs> So I think that concealer was a category where I tried a lot of products this year, but those are kind of the top picks and the top faves that stand out when I look at all the products that I used over the year. Now moving on to bronzer slash contour. Those of you who have followed me for many years might have had quite a, quite a shock this year because normally, I'm piling on like three bronzers slash contour products at any given moment onto my face at one time. And this year I really, really toned it down. We really went the natural route with the bronzing and contouring. And I just really honed in on the, on the cream. It was kind of just a one product, a one hit wonder, it was my most consistent look and most worn look throughout the year. And I have a lot of favorites when it comes to that, a lot of the same favorites over the years, obviously. This year I really reached for and wanted to make a plan to use up my Tom Ford shade and illuminate. I also love the elf putty bronzer, the Huda Beauty, the Westman Atelier. Like there's so many that I love. And again, that have been consistent favorites of mine, but this was probably my most reached for and used and loved. And I don't know what the future holds for me and this product because I've said it a million times before, but I have no intentions of purchasing it again once I do use it up because I just, I mean, as you can see, I don't touch the highlighter in here. So it would be such a waste of money for me to repurchase this product. And I do wish that they would come out with the individual pans because I would buy that in a heartbeat because I love this shade. It's very much that true like warm contour whereas other products can be a little bit more of that proper like gray undertone, more of a shade for contour, but as an all rounder, like favorite for every day, if I want something to do like a two in one, I want it to contour and bronze. I do love the tone of this, but yeah, really 2022 was the year of the singular cream, <laughs> cream product, which is kind of a first for me and was really consistently how I did my makeup. And that paired with my Smith Cosmetics 157 brush, I mean, <sighs> just a match made in heaven. I love this more natural take on the contour and bronzer. I think it's much more suiting to my makeup style these days, which again, I know unheard of for me, <laughs> but I guess especially in the winter too. In the summertime, I like to play with a little bit more of that shimmery bronzy life, but for now I just, yeah, gotta spread the truth y'all. This has just been the favorite, the go-to. So cream and contour, big, big changes this year. 
Let's talk about the powder, my people. You all knew this was coming. Oh my God, the Givenchy freaking loose powder. This is the Prisme Libre Matte Finish and Enhanced Radiance Loose Powder. This is the shade number three, Voile Rose. Voile Rose, oh my bad. Uh, this, this powder changed my life this year. This was the arguably the biggest, most impactful makeup discovery I've ever had in the history of my YouTube channel and my life. This converted me entirely to under eye powder, setting, baking, whatever you wanna call it. It has changed the longevity in my makeup. And if there's one product that you will take out of this entire pile, for me and how I've done my makeup for years, this is the biggest, this is the one, this is the one. I know it's expensive. I have not found another powder that does the same, that applies the same every single day when I'm doing my makeup. First of all, it's made me look forward to doing my makeup and it's made me like want to do my makeup more because it makes that much of a difference. And maybe this is just coming from someone who was never a powder person. So maybe it was that much more of an impact, but also because I love that like wet, dewy makeup look. I found that for years, always, my makeup has just never held up. It's never stayed. It's never had that longevity that other people's makeup seemed to have, but I also couldn't do the traditional baking because my skin was so dry. It would just like peel and cake and fall apart. And this just like answered all of the prayers, all of the makeup woes that I've had. You guys, I can't express to you enough how much this powder changed my life. And it's just the shade, oh my God. I'm... We love her, we love her so much. I, I hate the packaging. Can I just say that the lid, every single time it just gets like, coated up in the actual powder. So that could really, um, <coughs> sorry, I just inhaled that. I could do with different packaging, but this paired with my little triangle puffy puffs that I got on Amazon. How many times do I gotta scream it from the rooftops? Let's just do one side here and have one final little loving moment for this powder and the magic that it puts under the eyes. Look at that, look at that shiny, 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 shiny. Kind of looks like I'm tired, whatever. Boom, set, smooth, blurred. I'll never get over it. What a favorite from this year. What a magical product. From 2022, this is that. <laughs> now I did not wash my brushes before doing this. Probably could have, but I wanna talk about blush. And I also wanna give an honorable mention to the blush brush that I have used. And it just changed my blush life this whole year. The Refer 04 brush. I have two of these. I have one that I use for cream, one that I use for powder. Sometimes I use one for both, but really I just decided this year. And the use of this brush was just it for me. It's the, it's the perfect shape, it's the perfect angle, it's the perfect fluffiness. It works for cream and powder. And I just wanna give a shout out to this because it's just the, this, we've been married this year. Married. <laughs> I love you and I love this blush brush. It's so good. And when it comes to blush, I really kind of changed the way that I apply blush a lot this year. I think we've done a lot of layering with both cream and powder. I've kind of switched up here and there how I've been applying it, like kind of going onto the eyes. We've been applying our blush like further out on the face. And you know, there's just been a lot of, uh, blush was a big part of my makeup routine this year as it always is, but even more so like the cream blush application has just been the forefront of my brain. And I have a lot of uh, a lot of blush favorites that I just wanted to quickly rip through because there were so many launches. I couldn't possibly pick one. Obviously, I'm gonna start with my Nude Sticks Picante blush because this year, I, I had actually teased it in my 2021 beauty favorites, but this year, my Nude Sticks Picante blush, the shade I created with the Nude Sticks team, became a part of the permanent Nude Sticks lineup. So in 2022, it was added to the carousels and the stores and online everywhere that that nude sticks is available and they added it to the permanent lineup to the blushes. So this was such a proud moment and such an exciting part of 2022 for me and seeing how many of you guys got your hands on Picante and you know, became lovers of the orange blush world. It was just, it, I, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it honestly because this was such a such an amazing product, such an amazing project and it was truly my love child. Like I, <laughs> I wanted a true orange blush and she became a permanent piece of, of makeup history this year. So I'm so thrilled and thank you so much to everybody who purchased Picante, who used Picante, who shared love about Picante. Just this truly is my baby and to Nude Sticks for continuing to allow me to uh, work on it and continue to promote it and be a part of the Picante world. She's my angel and she, uh, yeah, had a big year. Big year for Picante this year. So obviously, obviously that's number one. And then another blush that I actually just wanted to mention really quickly is the Charlotte Tilbury Color of Passions. Oh, she's so disgusting and used and loved, but I was very, very happy that they brought this back this year because it was a, a previously a, a limited edition product, but the shade, you know, I might actually have to wear this. 
one now. I feel like that would go with the vibe much more. It's okay, whatever, we'll do something else. I'll decide after, but yeah, this one came back and it's such a good shade, especially for the winter. Lips and cheeks, it's so good. The packaging, it's perfect. In 2022, Benefit launched their powder blushes, which was such an exciting, exciting launch from Benefit. And I think re reflecting on it, looking back over the year and going back to the launch and whatever, and I think that Willa, out of all of them really truly is my favorite shade from the bunch. I love the packaging, first of all. It just makes me so happy. It makes me think of spring, but I love the color. And this one has such a glow, even in the last few weeks since I've been kind of adding this on top of my cream blushes, it really does just have such a glow to it. It's so beautiful. And what a fabulous addition for benefit that they had from the year. So Willa is my top, that's my top pick. I'm just gonna say it out of all the shades. Love that one and was really, really happy to be a part of that whole launch with Benefit as well. So that was really exciting. Persona also launched their bubble cream blush and I had such a, such a love moment with this. It's such a good, bright, hot pink. If I were to ever, it's so funny, people comment this all the time and send me messages being like, you need to come out with a cool pink with nude sticks to like complete my, my blush life. But really Persona created the perfect cool tone, bright, pink. And this is the shade Bubble. They also have it in powder form. I love the packaging. It's also Sona's brand and I think she's done such an incredible job with it. So this was a huge, very exciting launch from this year and I used it a ton. Love me a hot pink blush forever. And then the final blushes I wanted to mention, maybe I'll just put them on because they're last. Ah, oh, the Laura Mercier duo, my friends. First of all, both of these were new launches from Laura Mercier this year and they really just tickled my heartstrings and arguably they're my most, probably my most used blushes consistently from the whole year. So this is the Tinted Moisturizer blush. My favorite is the shade Provence. And this is the blush color infusion in the shade All That Sparkles. I think online it also says Rose Glow. What a fabulous color. What a fabulous color. When I was talking about doing my bridal makeup, I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> So my favorite way to apply these, I take a little bit of the Provence liquid blush with my Refero 4 brush and I kind of just blend it on, pat it on top and it applies beautifully on top of the Givenchy powder and I actually prefer it. I kind of have gone back and forth between doing powder before and after blush, but I think if you'll notice in the last few videos, I've just decided my blush has never looked better and I think it's because I go on top of the Givenchy powder and then it really just locks in that glow and by bouncing around and giving it a little bit of extra blending time I feel like it just gives that ultimate natural diffused look so the Provence is the perfect everyday neutral shade for me and just this formula of liquid blush in general <sighs> like find a shade that works for you and try it because it really is so stunning and then I literally just do this with the brush, take a little dip of the All That Sparkles and just press that on top so lightly and it just, ooh! It's such a stunning combo, such beautiful products that Laura Mercier launched and huge, huge favors from the year. Now at this point, I'm gonna go back in with the powder and sometimes I'll use a separate powder, sometimes I'm a little bit lazy like right now and I'll just use the same, but I'll go in and use the powder and just take a little bit of that and just add it on top just to make sure that everything is diffused and settled in. And this is the perfect opportunity to discuss <laughs> this brush right here. This is the Morphe X Ariel brush and I forget it every time. It's the A14 brush and I'm gonna keep talking about it and keep mentioning it in the hopes of um, begging them to bring this out as an individual piece outside of the set because currently you can only buy this in one of the two sets that they came out with but this brush is so soft and it's so perfect and it's just made powder and blending out concealer and everything is such a dream. <laughs> it's so good and I need to be able to buy another one. It's perfect. And it's a favorite discovery brush tool from the year as well. And it's just, it's so easy. It's so lovely and divine to use, truly. For setting spray, this is not even a question. Consistent from my last year's favorites, I have really, really not used nor cared to use another setting spray. The Benefit Professional is the one for me and I will bathe in it forever. It's so good. And I'm actually gonna leave the cheeks there because really I, I occasionally used a highlighter. I think the Dior Nude Glow was such a standout favorite, of course. Um, Bubbly Bebe from my Nude Sticks Beachy Nudes kit obviously was such a favorite, but really for the most part in my everyday makeup, I kind of just stepped away, streamlined it a little bit and opted for layering up really creamy, delicious, glowing blushes. And that was kind of enough for me because like mascara, it was one of those pieces from my daily makeup that I kind of just didn't use as much. Let's talk about the brows because I do want to fill in my brows before we continue doing anything else. Uh, the Benefit Micro Filling Brow Pen. 
such a huge standout. This is a perfect, perfect way to lazily fill in your brows because it's got the three prongs. It just makes it so simple. It cuts down on the time. It allows you to draw three hairs at once. And even though I am very particular and I sit here and wiggle and fiddle with it for a long time, it just makes it so much easier and it really adds to that beautiful, natural, feathery brow look. So this has consistently been a product that I've used to fill in my brows. And I just love how easy it is. <laughs> Now, as far as brow gel goes, obviously like the e.l.f. brow lift was the one from the year. Look at, look at how much. I literally scooped all the remnant product and put it on the side because I had so little left and I was like, I just simply must use it all up. And it was so funny to me going back to my 2021 favorites and talking about the Anastasia brow freeze because this just really means that this was the year of the e.l.f. brow lift for me. And it changed my brow life. It's such a beautiful product and you can't beat the price. It's so good. And I don't even, I'm like, brow freeze who? Yeah, this was the year of the brow lift for me and having those slicked laminated brows, it was just, yeah, this. I do wanna give a little mention to the got to be, what's this called? Sorry, this one's in German. I'm pretty sure it's the got to be glued brow gel or something. Anyway, it's for brows and edges. And I actually picked this up at the start of the year when I was in Sweden. And I just wanna give a mention to it because obviously like the got to be products are things that we've used in our brows for, for years past. And I love that they brought this out, but obviously it's not something that has been widely available at all since the discussion of this but it is really beautiful and obviously it's a very affordable product from the drugstore not when you're buying it resale on Amazon people really love to jack up the price but I think I ended up paying like four dollars Canadian for it or something when I was in Sweden so I just wanted to give a little shout out that this really was such a favorite from the year two but obviously recently like truly in this last week you guys saw me uh, discover and play with the sneaky little product this is the benefit fluff up brow wax and obviously this is a new product to benefit this is recent so I have to give a little honorable mention to it even though it literally just came out so it's not true to like a yearly favorite but it is a product that I'm so excited about and it's so easy to use and it literally just fluffs up your brows it's in the name makes it look fluffy and it's just different because the elf brow lift uh, I don't really know how to explain it in the best way, but the e.l.f. brow lift like takes your hairs and slicks them to the skin. It's that laminated look. This is like a brow gel, but it just, it's kind of like the birth of a clear brow gel as well as like a texturizing, thickening brow gel in one. So you're getting that really like lifted feathery look. So it's, it's quite unique. It's kind of just like a two in one for a brow product that gives that really natural fluffy brow look and sometimes with those more laminated products like you just have to be really particular about how you're using them because if you put them on top and any of your like foundation concealer cream products get in them it can be goopy it can have a little bit more of a fuss when trying to like lay them out and you just have to work with them a little bit more so even though it's a beautiful look and I love it and we'll continue using it for like quick everyday makeup this just makes it very easy and it's a really beautiful new launch from Benefit so I'm giving it an honorable mention even though it's new <laughs> I just realized I've been talking to you with goop on my lips this whole time. Let me just fix that really quick. And let's just talk about the lips first while we actually let these brows sit and do their thing. Lips is always a tough category for me when it comes to doing yearly favorites because there's so many different products I use, so many different colors, so many different formulas. Like there's kind of just a lip for everything that I do in my life. So I can't pick one ever. I think consistently when I look back on the year, the Chantecaille Lip Chic in the shade Patience was definitely my most used like nude go-to everyday shade. Such beautiful formula, such beautiful packaging. Also the Revlon Super Lustrous Shine lipsticks in every color, all the colors across the board. Also some of my most consistently used favorite products for sure. But this year was really the year of the lip liner for me and specifically wearing like a lip liner and a gloss. Again, when it, with the glosses, like there's just so many different glosses, so many different colors, formulas, like recently the Dior lip oil has been tickling my soul. The Gizu Honey lip oil, the Kosas Jellyfish, like there's so many lip glosses that I love, but the lip liner just reigned supreme for me. So the Victoria Beckham O2 Lip Definer, obviously used it to the last smallest nubbin of life. <laughs> in 2022, also discovered the Sephora Collection Gel Lip Liners. This one's in the shade Dressed to the 90s. Obviously this is more recent too. Also more recently, I don't even have it. I actually don't know where it is. I need to go on a deep dive, but we'll just pretend that this is the Makeup Forever. And Liz Cacao Artist Pencil. That was a huge, fun, like very cool tone discovery 
from the last little bit as well, but I just, I don't care about all of the previous favorites. I don't care about the products that I use the most throughout the year because there's nothing that's gonna be as magical as the NYX nude beige shade for me. This pencil, okay, so first of all, in my 2021 favorites was the NYX natural lip pencil, also a beautiful lip liner, but the shade nude beige has changed my life. And I truly, I want to use nothing else. Whether you think I'm being dramatic or not, I just don't know how to explain that this is the best tone out of any lip liner that I've put on my personal color of my lips. I have quite colored, quite pinky lips. I often will like wear nothing if I'm wearing just like clear lip balm or what and people are always like, oh my God, what's the color on your lips? I'm like, LOL, it's my natural lip color, which can prove to be a little bit difficult when I'm trying to wear certain lip shades. Uh, yeah, anyway, with the natural color of my lips, I've just never felt more comfortable in a color. I've just never loved a color more. I can't even explain it. It was an aha moment. It was a eureka moment. It was a makeup life-changing moment when I put this color on my lips. So obviously, again, depending on the lip color I'm wearing, depending on the color of my skin, the season, whatever, like even with my Picante blush, it's that very warm shade. So using something like the Victoria 02 lip definer, which is a little bit more of that like warm brown shade, that just complements colors like this more. But for my everyday natural, this is my naked face <laughs> feeling, ah, this color changed my life. It changed my life. And I'm so thrilled that we discovered it going into the new year because this is my new year, new me, this natural, stunning little lip liner and lip gloss combo. Like I, like I'm just, look at this. Name a better lip combo. I will wait because it doesn't exist. <laughs> For an everyday go-to combo, I just can't get over how perfect this combo is. I don't care that we discovered it at the end of the year. This is it for me. Following from the lips, let's talk about the eyes. Now, eyeshadow is always a tricky one for me because I have my same favorites, the same things I love to wear. I love to put bronzer on my eyes. I love my Shiseido Aura Dews, like a sparkly lid topper. You know, those are my go-to things. But I always have a palette in my everyday makeup bag. Even if I'm not necessarily wearing eyeshadow every day, if I do, I always have like a go-to one. And I think consistently my most used favorite was my little, Inglot eyeshadow here and it's a little trio. They have a ton of different colors of these rainbow shadows and I actually had this in a duo <laughs> and then I finally got my hands on the individual one and I put this one shade because for my everyday perfect shadow, this is it. It was like my most worn shadow, everyday shadow that I kept in my makeup bag. I still keep it in my everyday makeup drawer. Obviously for travel, this could not be more perfect. And these shades, I'm gonna write the exact number and link it in the description box down below. But yeah, love this so much. I wish Inglot was uh, a little bit more at the forefront of the world because I feel like it's a brand that's slept on and specifically in Canada, it's not like easily readily available. Like you have to order it online. You can't like see it with your eyes in person. So when I travel, I love to creep an Inglot counter and see what's up. So huge favorite from the year. And then in terms of palettes, like I just had such a Hindash discovery. I did a full face or I recreated his like signature makeup look at the start of the year. And it's just been like this love with Hindash and everything that he does since then. And his two palettes were such huge discoveries for me this year. This is the Beautopsy palette. This is the Monochromance palette. Here are the two palettes side by side. I think obviously for a more everyday neutral, the Beautopsy is gonna be the way to go. But I actually really love the neutral, like the top two, Alter Ego and Match Made. Those two shades are just really, really beautiful. And the versatility of these palettes, the amount of shades that you get in here, they apply so beautifully. Like they're so, so good. <laughs> so good that it's what I included in my Landmas giveaways, obviously. Everybody who won a Landmas giveaway this year got to take home a Beautopsy palette. And I just, even though I don't necessarily play with the fun, I don't even think, yeah, that's not even been touched. I haven't even touched the red shade in here, but the neutral shades are perfect. If you just want one palette to kind of do it all and cover you across the board, and you can also use it, like it's multi-use. You can use it on your face, you can use it wherever you want. You don't have to just use it on the eyes. So if you're a little bit more creative and you have a little bit more fun with your makeup, then obviously that's something that's uh, spectacular for you. I'm a little bit more of a boring peach and I just like to put this on my eyelids, <laughs> keep it nice and simple so these two little shades get the most love from me. But I also love to have the option. I love to have the option to play if I so choose. I'm just running that on my crease real quick like. So across the board from 2022, this was like favorite palettes, hands down, favorite brand discovery, favorite launches, like the Hindash palettes, excellent, excellent. If you haven't tried them, you will love them.
Now let's finish off with mascara, my friends, because like the primer, like the highlight mascara and my blinking issues. It's just, I think it's just become a tick, honestly. I'm just like a blinking freak. <laughs> and so mascara and I were just not big friends for a lot of this year. I just really kind of embraced the makeup look without mascara. Like I kind of love it. I find it to be very like, chic and almost model-esque feeling. I don't know. I think a big goal for me in 2023 is to find a brown mascara that I love. I think that will be a perfect like blending of worlds for me, the no mascara and mascara. Just meet me in the middle with a brown mascara. I think I would love that. I still haven't tried the lash lift. I know so many of you have told me to do it. Yeah, I just really embraced no mascara so much this year. And when I did wear mascara, it kind of made it extra special feeling almost. And obviously I have my consistent favorites, my always favorites, the Lancome mascaras, all of them are perfect. The Tom Ford Badass Black. I'm not even gonna go there now because I know we have something to talk about, but I refuse to believe that the possibility of that being discontinued is true. So I'm gonna hold my tongue until I have a statement from Tom Ford Beauty confirming because I will be unwell if that's true. So all of my old favorites remain favorites. Charlotte Tilbury Full Fat Lashes. Like there's just, there's so many mascaras that I love. The two from this year that came to mind when I thought of my yearly favorites were the Tower 28 Make Waves mascara because this was a very exciting launch from them as well as the Estee Lauder Double Wear mascara which we recently discovered thanks to Nikki Makeup and this is zero smudge literally zero smudge zero transfer it's everything I want in the wear of a daily mascara and the ease of application it's got a nice little thin wand the packaging is so luxe like this little fluted metal I can't get over it it's so pretty and it just gives that light fluffy lash and up until I used this mascara, there was no mascara that had absolutely zero transfer for me. Like it's never happened. If I'm wearing mascara for like eight to 14 hours in a day, I'm always kind of checking and doing a little bit of this, but this mascara was the first time that I personally experienced zero transfer, nothing. So I say to you, Estee Lauder, please um, bring this out in a brown because I feel like that would be the perfect harmony between what I have and what I want in a mascara. So yeah, love this look, super natural, light, fluffy, and no transfer. So my friends, that is the finished makeup look. This has been my ultimate favorite go-to makeup that I have been wearing so consistently. And I truly feel like I'm ending the year with makeup that out of all the years that I've been doing YouTube and playing with makeup, I feel the most me. And I know that sounds so lame, but it's so true. I'm, I'm obsessed with this makeup. We had such fabulous makeup discoveries this year and it has been so much fun creating super fun looks, doing very simple everyday looks with you guys and just really honing in on our skills here together and finessing the way we apply makeup and just finding true, true long-standing favorites. And I'm so thrilled to be ending this year feeling so happy on so many levels and makeup included. I'm just so thrilled with the roundup in the collection of makeup favorites this year. And I feel like it's been, it's just my favorite one yet. And I hope that together we were able to discover so many fabulous things that make us feel good and amazing and more confident in our everyday lives. And the makeup world, the beauty space, it can be really overwhelming. There's so much, there's always so much newness and just also so much devastation. Lots of products that get discontinued and removed from our grasp, but it's also, it's just fun, isn't it? Makeup is just fun. I think if you're able to step back and look at it for what it is, it's just fun. And I have such a great time doing what I do here. And so thank you guys so much for your continued support and your love. And I love our community. I love having fun with you guys. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed my roundup. These were all of my top, top beauty picks and faves from the year. 2022 was a good one, you guys. And I'm so excited for 2023. I love you so much. I have one more Landmas video going live tomorrow and then I will be signing off for the year. So we'll see you guys tomorrow for a new vlog. I hope you enjoyed my roundup and I hope we have a good chat in the comments down below. Love you guys a lot. See you soon. Bye.